pleased to get the Warrior Wednesday trends back up and running, and we couldn't think of a better first guest for us for the off season than a national champion and someone that just won uh, the national championship at the NCAA level with Quinnipiac University. Uh, Charles Alexis Legault joining us. Uh, Charles Alexis, great to have you on. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, how is the celebration and the uh, post championship uh, life going for you at Quinnipiac right now? It's been surreal just being able to come back on campus and and stay as a group. Just like you, you walk around, people stop you to to take photos and stuff. Um, it's been it's been an incredible experience uh, since uh, we won last Saturday. Does it almost feel like you're a little bit of a celebrity now too? You mentioned stopping yeah. around campus, people at campus taking your picture. Uh, you know, a lot of those. I think especially with like Big Ten schools. When you look at the Wisconsin's and Michigan states and that kind of thing, when they have, you know, teams that are from basketball and football, some of those big schools, that kind of is the case. But with a national championship at a school like Quinnipiac, which I think is the first sport is hockey, it's got to be almost like a celebrity feel out there on campus. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So coming into this year, uh, Quinnipiac, a very good team this year, uh, a team that, you know, last year, I think you got a long way, just couldn't make it to the to the NCAA, uh, to the Frozen Four. And, and this year, obviously, had a bit of a different feel. You had a veteran team, a lot of guys who uh, made a big impact last year. So take me through what the year was like for yourself with the Bobcats this year and the success that the team had this year at Quinnipiac. Yeah, uh, for sure. Like, um, yeah, I was actually talking to one of the coaches, and he was saying how surprised he was that um, – the older guys came back for their fifth years this year. And he talked about how that had a huge impact on uh, our team success. So um, I think that was a huge, uh, a huge thing for us. And the younger guys that maybe didn't have as big of a role last year that stepped in and, and like had an impact, like the Colin graph that Colin graphs that we went to get from the portal, Jacob Quillen that played in the BCHL in Penticton those guys were huge for us. Yeah, there was, uh, I believe, 14 guys from the BCHL that played on Quinnipiac's roster this year. Uh, I know, obviously, you guys played at different times, different teams, all sorts of things. But did you feel a little bit of a camaraderie there between those guys, the, knowing that you came from the same junior league and made up almost the entire roster? Yeah, for sure. Coming in, just being able to bond over the – the stories from the BCHL and like the, the different organization, the rivalries, like me and Jacob, like the West West Kelowna Warriors and Pitt Ticton rivalry is huge. So like we talked about it a bit, even Yaniv, um, we there was like we were holding grudges at the start, but um, we got to to know each other and we're great friends now. So um yeah, it was funny at the start of the year being able to bond over that and it clearly made our team closer. Yeah, and those are guys that you would have played against, I guess, when it came to, obviously, the COVID time and the Okanagan Cup at that time, but uh, obviously having that bond, too. You know, I want to jump back a couple of years ago to when you first got to West Kelowna, and obviously a lot of uncertainty about where the world was at at that point, not really knowing what was going on, but your first impressions of not just the Warriors organization, but also the city of West Kelowna for yourself. It was on. There's only positive, uh, positives uh, when it comes to Westgate. Just being able to come in into an organization where development was a priority. Um, I mean, John Murphy and Rod as new owners made a great job with the facilities. There's a new gym there, new room, new coaching staff. Uh, Ayrton's amazing. Simon and Georgie for for the defensemen. Um, I felt welcome as well. The my billet family, I still consider as a second family. The Sharoons were were incredible to me, and Riley still plays on the team. So um, yeah, Westgate was truly a blessing for me uh, when it comes to the situation I was put in in uh, in junior. And you know, I wanted to ask you as well because during that time there were a lot of players that went to the USHL, and you know, you went from West Kelowna to Lincoln and played in the USHL. Was it a no-brainer for you to come back to the BCHL and to come back to West Kelowna last year, knowing that, you know, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't because of the experience at all. It was just the COVID factor. You know, one league was playing when, when another league wasn't. When you heard of the BCHL, it was going to be fully operational. Everything was going to be the same as it was before. Was it a no-brainer for you to come back to West Kelowna? 
it was a no-brainer for sure. And the fact that we had a good group of guys coming, like the, we we had a really good team that year, and we we knew we had a shot to to the to win the Fred the uh, cup uh, championship so but we didn't end up doing it but we had a pretty good year and and um, I knew that with the coaching staff in place uh, it would be better for my development to go to the BCHL and and learn from guys as guys like George Josh George's sometimes Shea Weber was a, was at our practices so it was it was it was a great experience for me and it was a no-brainer to go back uh, after that year in Lincoln. Yeah, not very often they get a couple of uh, star studded NHL defense and out to yeah. practice every day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at last year for this team, and uh, or I guess two seasons ago now, and you know the 2021-22 team uh, is so dynamic, so many different things going on, and I know there was a close knit group as well. You make it all the way to the Interior Conference Finals, something this team hasn't done since 2016 when they won it all. Is it still a, does it still feel like a brotherhood for you with that group too? Do you still feel in contact with them? And even now, when you're at the college level playing against those guys, it must be a bit of an interesting feeling too. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, I mean, I still talk to those guys. Guys like Alexi Van Hood Cachero. He 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 was my best buddy forever. And uh, guys like Felix Trudeau, uh, Nick Ardenas. Um, those guys are really guys that I stayed in contact with and playing against Trudes and Artie this year was, uh, was fun. See, being able to see them and like compete against those guys, guys that, that were on my team last year. So, um, yeah, it, it was fun. And all the guys on that team, I consider brothers for life. Like we, we had such a big bond and like what we did together was, was so big that he like, it was a true brotherhood in that room that year, and it, it it was a fun year to to and a fun group to be a part of. How well did that set you up to going to Quinnipiac and playing this year? Not just from a playing standpoint. Obviously, the BCHL yeah. has a lot of talent. It's a very good league to grow and and become a good college hockey player. But just from that mentality that you know there was a really good team here the year that you were here. You go to Quinnipiac. It's a great team that year. Obviously. How does that how does that help you with that mindset of going in and having a good feeling from the year before and then starting that fresh with the next season, knowing that you got another good team? Yeah, I mean, being able to compete with those guys and like it, it's it's a huge factor. Like you, you compete against great players every day. You get better and after you put, push each other in the weight room, like the facilities are there. You have the gym right by the room. Like you, you practice, you lift after practice, you get stronger throughout the year. So I feel like he, I couldn't have been more prepared to, to make the jump and, uh, and play uh, college hockey this year. There were a lot of great things that happened with yourself and, and Quinnipiac this year. I believe you guys went to Ireland. Uh, also they were able to go to Belfast this year, uh, you know, just experiencing that and then going through obviously the whole entire run through the playoffs when there's one thing that sticks in the back of your mind from this year at Quinnipiac, what is it for you? I mean, you, you can't like the moment this year was like the best moment I had was clearly to win a champion national championship. Like since I've been young, like my dad played at BU, like my dream was to play in college hockey and um, to win a national championship and being able to do that, uh, it was truly a, a dream come true for me. And uh, that moment just like he completely blacked out when we scored that goal in overtime, like, and to be to celebrate with the fans afterwards, like it, it, it was, it was amazing. Yeah. I know you mentioned you black out, but just the, I know it, it happened 10 seconds into overtime, really quick into overtime. Take me through just kind of where you were at, what you were doing at that moment. Uh, you know, you just get settled in. Just get settled in. You think it's going to be a long haul. Minnesota's a great team. All of a sudden, 10 seconds later, you're a national champion. Yeah, I mean, after the third period, uh, like, it was it was amazing. Like, everybody in that room knew that we were going to win that game. Like, the belief was, was incredible. And that play we ran off the faceoff was a set play. We probably ran a hundred times through the year and it didn't work once, but it worked in the national championship. So it was like, I, I was just ready to go. And after we scored, I'm like, we won. Like, it, like it was, it, it was incredible. Like 
I can get like I can't find words to describe the feeling that I felt uh, at that moment. And the post celebration afterwards, you talked about you know celebrating with the fans. You come back to Quinnipiac, you're able to have a great time on campus. Uh, your group was just at Fenway Park too a, a yeah. few days ago. Obviously, yeah. a huge experience there. Uh, the, the college lifestyle for you, and not just the when it comes to the hockey, but also you know hitting the books, having to manage the time as well. How was that aspect for you this year, uh, getting delved into to your first year in the, in post junior? It's been hard. Um, I mean, you're coming from junior where you go to the ring, practice, train, and after you hang out with the guys all day, maybe like get one or two classes in here and there. But uh, like my the workload is going to be more important in college and you just need to to set your schedule and respect it, like set some time slots to study and and after to go practice and it was it was an adjustment but i it, it got me more disciplined with uh, with the school aspect of uh, my whole life and uh, i've 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 liked it since uh, since i started Talk about the a little bit about the off season for you coming up one of the big things yeah. that just took place and something that's been uh, throughout the whole entire year is the nhl central scouting rankings yeah. you were ranked on the last list at 179 you know, I know that it's something that I think a lot of hockey players will say, oh, you know, I'm just focusing on the grind and focusing on getting there. It's not thinking about that at all. But a, self, a sense of accomplishment for you to be on that list and mentioned on that list and obviously have your opportunity, have your name called in the draft in Nashville this year. Yeah, for sure. But uh, at the end of the day, as you just said, they, we have a lot. Every player has a long term goal and that's just uh, a short term reward. So it doesn't mean much. But um, to have that recognition feels nice, of course. But uh, it doesn't go further, much further than that. The summer coming up for you after your first college hockey season, uh, you couldn't ask for a better way to do it than winning the national championship. We talked a little bit before this about, you know, having a good group coming back next year as well. What does the summer look like for you? Uh, obviously finishing up classes here and then uh, getting into the opportunity, I'm sure, to go back home and train. But what does the next few months look like for yourself? I mean, we're already started to work out again. Uh, the ice is out here, so it's gonna give us a break of of skating for a bit. When I uh, when I finish school on May thirteenth, I'll start skating back in Montreal. But um, it's gonna be a grind this summer. You know, the goal is to to win championships years after years, and it's not easy. So um, the goal is to get the body right and. Uh, get as le as athletic as possible throughout the the summertime so um that'll be a focus and of course uh work on the details of my game on the ice uh that I can improve so lastly for you I just want to ask you about just kind of summing up your time in West Walnut you know you mentioned that it was a really good group of guys there last year you made a lot of memories on and off the ice a lot of people talk about junior hockey being the fastest time of your life. And now that it's gone by, I'm sure you can agree with that sentiment. Is this a place that's going to hold a, a special spot with you uh, for years to come? For sure. For sure. Uh, and we were talking about going back sometime soon with the the Quebecers, like me, Trudes, and and even I, I think Artie's coming to Montreal this summer to, to see us. So, um, I mean, Westgate has been such a big part of my development and I can't thank the community enough for, for what it, it did for me. And um, yeah, Westgate is, is a great organization and I can't, like, it'll, it'll always, always be in my heart. So um, yeah, for sure. Well, we appreciate your time today. Thanks so much for this, Charles Alexis. We look forward to watching you throughout the course of the summer and then obviously throughout the course of next year as well. And uh, hoping the best for you as well. So we'll keep track on things here in West Kelowna of, uh, of your success. So appreciate your time today. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome, man. Sorry, I had the stutters for a bit. No, no, that's all good.